Yes, sir. Oh, wow. Look at this. This is wonderful. How wonderful this is to see so many faces in this place uh, and to see all these folks here on this really wonderful and auspicious day. So welcome and thank you for being here with us on this exciting day. Uh, I am John Murad. I'm the chief of police. Uh, Mayor Weinberger is here with us today and as are all of you. And so thank you. I want to thank and welcome the family members, especially of the folks, including little ones who are here, because I know how much family members share the burden of this unique and challenging but tremendously rewarding profession. Um, we are very fortunate to have Mayor Merle Weinberger with us here today and I will now turn it over to him. Well good afternoon everyone. <clears throat> Thank you all for joining us. I can't quite remember a time when this uh, room was was so full of uh, officers and family members, thank you all for being with us. Um, I see that we've been joined today by the U.S. Attorney, Cole Karras. Thank you for joining us, Cole. And uh, also, I see at least four members of our city council here, President Paul, Sarah Carpenter, Mark Barlow, Tim Doherty. Thank you all for joining this, uh, this event. The, you know, this is, a, this is an important moment in the careers of the folks in the front row here and a milestone for all the families in the room and really an exciting sign of hope and progress for the people of Burlington. For those of you receiving your promotions today, thank you for your continued commitment to serve our community and congratulations on this achievement. For those who are new to the Burlington Police Department and to, for some of you, a career in law enforcement, I hope that you will find, as I have, that serving the city of Burlington and its people is the opportunity of a lifetime. Burlingtonians care deeply about their neighbors. We embrace equity and hard work to foster a sense of belonging. We are proud of our spectacular public spaces and our thriving and diverse small businesses and artists. And we take seriously our stewardship of Vermont's only major airport and other vital pieces of public infrastructure. For Burlingtonians and visitors alike, our city is a place where lifelong memories are made. And all of this and more is for you to protect and to serve. Burlingtonians have made clear time and time again that they agree public safety is the most important function of local government. We are proud as a city government to be leaders in restorative justice and court diversion. We are proud to be innovating new public safety resources and expanding our capacities for human services to support people living with challenges of homelessness, of addiction, or mental health. These are areas the city only recently really started making major investments in as a city government. We are proud of our excellent detective unit, our specially trained emergency response unit, and of all the officers who spend their days and nights on patrol, keeping the streets of this city safe and welcoming. And I am proud and grateful today to offer you one more thing that every world-class police department needs and deserves, and that's the confidence of a strong and a reliable leader. In just a few minutes, I will be officially swearing into the post of Chief of Police, John Murat. From the day he stepped into this office, Chief Murad has faced tests with little precedent in Burlington. His first summer in this role saw large, sustained protests just outside the front door. We lost 40% of our officers in his first two years. And 2022 was a year of record high gun violence and too frequent disorder in our treasured downtown. Chief Murat has led from the front through all of this and forged progress in many areas. As Today's ceremony will demonstrate the chief has successfully worked to rebuild our ranks and expand the department in important and exciting ways. Further, while we continue to face a historic epidemic of drug overdoses and unprecedented housing pressures, downtown Burlington is returning to being the welcoming, vibrant, and safe public space that we've long enjoyed. And through all these challenges, the chief has continued the department's proud legacy of being one of the most transparent and progressive departments in the country. In short, Chief Murad is delivering the progress on public safety that the people of Burlingtonian, the people of Burlington are demanding action on. Chief, 
We're grateful to see you standing here today. And I am grateful too to your family. And I, uh, specifically, Vani, and I know we made MacArthur uh, stand somewhere in the back because uh, we're out there here. Oh, we didn't make him stand. And we were threatening to make him stand. And uh, uh, to the Chief's parents, Tim and Joanne, thank you all for your support of the Chief through uh, the challenges of, of the recent years. So with that, you know, this is a moment we've all been waiting far too long for, so let's get to it. Uh, Chief, please uh, raise your right hand and, and repeat after me. I, state your name. I, Jonathan Murad. Do solemnly swear or affirm. Do solemnly swear and affirm. That I will faithfully execute the office of Chief of Police. That I will faithfully execute the office of Chief of Police. For the city of Burlington and the state of Vermont. For the city of Burlington and state of Vermont. On my honor, I will never betray my badge, my integrity, my character, or the public trust. On my honor, I will never betray my badge, my honor, my character, my integrity, or the public trust. I will have the courage to hold myself and others accountable for our actions. I will have the courage to hold myself and others accountable for our actions. I will always uphold the Constitution and the community I serve. I will always uphold the Constitution and the community I serve. I will therein do equal right and justice to all men and women. I will therein do equal right and justice to all men and women. To the best of my judgment and ability. To the best of my judgment and ability. According to the laws of this state and the United States of America. According to the laws of this state and the United States of America. Under the pains and penalties of perjury. Under the pains and penalties of perjury. Congratulations, Chief. Thank you, sir. And I am, I, I'm so grateful for for your support, for your guidance. The mayor has been incredibly supportive of this agency always, but particularly over the last three years uh, that have been that have been challenging for all of us, for our community, for this department, uh, for the mayor, uh, and his support has been unwavering. Um, thank you very much, sir, for being here today, uh, coming away from family to be here. I am, I'm tremendously grateful. There, there is no ceremony when you get a job at a store or a restaurant, but there is one here. And it is because this is one of the greatest professions in the world. It is one that is fundamental to the well-being of our free and civil society. Why? Because our department is committed to making Burlington safe and fair everywhere for everyone. And our department is you. It is, it is all of you. It is especially the people who serve, who work here. It is people. And that's why this day is so important. We need good people. And I think that we are getting great ones. Now, we'll meet many of those new people shortly. But first, we're going to meet some of the leaders that they are joining. These are officers who stepped forward and looked to leadership. These are the officers who, who want to take care of the people who take care of us as a city. And for the families of those of you who are joining the department today, these are the officers who are going to make sure that your family members are guided and grown. So uh, let's meet our promotees. And we will start um, with our uh, Deputy Chief, Brian Labarge. If you'll step forward. Brian was appointed acting uh, deputy chief from the rank of lieutenant on July 1st of 2022, and then was officially appointed uh, the no longer acting deputy chief of administration, but the deputy chief of administration on June 6th of 2023, uh, once uh, I had been promoted. So he had 340 days in the acting role, a little bit less than the 1,089 that I had. But nevertheless, uh, he really stepped up at a time where we needed him, where we needed somebody to, to be in that role uh, Brian has had a, uh, an exemplary career, a career in which he has been uh, a leader on patrol in the Detective Bureau at the Chittenden Unit for Special Investigations, or COOSI, some of the most difficult and challenging cases that we can ever see as police come at COOSI, uh, which deals with uh, sex assaults and, and crimes against the elderly or the very young. Brian has led these parts uh, with, with uh, aplomb. 
and, and currently leads our detective bureau as the deputy chief of administration. So what we've seen over the past uh, year plus, that was Brian, as well as members of the detective bureau, but the incredible success that we've had uh, with the, the unprecedented violence that we saw in 2022 that we are not seeing repeated in 2023 uh, was the leadership of, of Brian Labarge. Um, I am tremendously grateful that you uh, stepped forward and, and joined and took this role. Uh, and I am grateful constantly for your advice and guidance. And I thank you very much. So Brian will stay here and then we will ask the other ranks that are being promoted up at which point all will be given the oath uh, together. Um, and that oath will be administered by Deputy Chief Lebrec. You wanna do this one separately? Yes, all right, 10-4. That is how it works most of the time, which is that Wade gives me looks that tell me I've done something a little bit off and is time to, to correct and redo. Fair enough. <clears throat> I, state your name. I, Brian LaBarge. Do solemnly swear or affirm. Do solemnly swear and affirm. That I will faithfully execute. That I will faithfully execute. The office of, Chief, of Deputy Chief of Police. The office of Deputy Chief of Police. For the city of Burlington and the state of Vermont. For the city of Burlington and the state of Vermont. On my honor, on my honor, I will never betray my badge. I will never betray my badge. My integrity, my integrity, my character, my character, or the public trust, or the public trust. And I will always have the courage. I will always have the courage to hold myself and others, to hold myself and others accountable for our actions. Accountable for our actions. I will always uphold the Constitution. I will always uphold the Constitution and the community I serve. And the community I serve. I will therein do equal right and justice. I will therein do equal right and justice to all men and women. To all men and women, to the best of my judgment and ability. To the best of my judgment and ability, according to the laws of the state and the United States of America. According to the laws of the state and the United States of America. Under pains and penalties of perjury. Under pains and penalties of perjury. So then proceeding on, uh, we have several members, three members who are being promoted from sergeant to lieutenant. And I would ask all three to come up uh, and then step forward as I talk about each of you. So that is Michael Beliveau, uh, Jacob Seller, and Richard Weinish. Mike Beliveau has led the Detective Bureau since March, and he led the narcotics unit before that. I have long admired Mike's investigatory acumen, but more so his innate decency. Soon after I arrived here at the Burlington Police Department in 2018, then Chief Del Pozo asked me to participate on the task force that was investigating allegations of abuse and worse at the former St. Joseph's Orphanage. Mike was one of the lead investigators. I, he showed incredible compassion. Uh, there were many living victims from that orphanage, people who were uh, older now, but were still carrying a lot of pain and trauma from their experiences there. And Mike was uh, incredible with them. Since then, I have watched him close homicide investigations and shooting investigations and assault investigations and drug investigations, and we are immeasurably grateful for his steady hand. Jake Seller. Jake is a reliable doer. In his 12th year with the BPD, he is the kind of leader whose calm and measured demeanor spreads among those he guides. Officers go to him for advice, for help, because they know that he will deliver. His style isn't flashy, and he doesn't call attention to himself, but it is there. It is steadily moving the ball down the field, or keeping the train on the tracks, or keeping the ship afloat, and take your pick of metaphors. I have never heard a complaint about Jake, not from citizens and not from cops. He is a pillar for USB, or the Uniformed Services Bureau, or patrol, which is uh, the very heart of our mission. And we are thankful that he is stepping into this new role as a lieutenant. And Rich Wynish. For the past two and a half years, Detective Sergeant Rich Weinish has led the Chittenden Unit for Special Investigations, or COOSY. As I said before, COOSY is a multi-agency task force that provides criminal investigative services in response to reports of sexual assault and serious sexual offenses of both children and adults, and cases of serious child abuse and neglect, or infant fatalities, and allegations of human trafficking. These are, are terrible crimes. They are not easy to deal with. As you can imagine, they take a toll. And Rich leads a unit in a way that makes sure that all those people 
are are uh, moving forward together, that the toll that that takes is minimized owing to the leadership that he has in which every team member is respected, everyone is valued, and all are heard. Gentlemen, thank you very much for stepping forward. City of Burlington, for the city of Burlington, and the state of Vermont, in the state of Vermont, on my honor, on my, on my honor, I will never betray my badge, I will never betray my badge, my integrity, my integrity, my character, my character, or the public trust, or the public trust. I will always have the courage, I will always have the courage to hold myself and others, to hold myself and others accountable for our actions, accountable for our actions. I will, I will always uphold, I will always uphold the Constitution. Constitution and community. I serve. I serve. I will therein. I will therein. Do equal right and justice. Do equal right and justice. To all men and women. To all men and women. To the best of my judgment. To the best of my judgment. And ability. And ability. According to the laws of this state. According to the laws of this state. And the United States of America. And the United States of America. Under the pains and penalties. Under the pains and penalties. Of perjury. Of perjury. The next is uh, from corporal or officer to sergeant. It is often said that the promotion to sergeant, which is the first supervisory rank of policing, is the biggest leap in an officer's career. Uh, moving from responsibility over one's own actions and goals to accountability for others is a significant transition. And I am grateful to the next three officers for making that leap. So would Phil Tremblay, Chase Favori, and Oren Byrne please step forward. Phil Tremblay. Phil has been exceptional since he joined the department in 2012. He is currently the sergeant in charge of the narcotics unit. Uh, he was previously the BPD's representative on the DEA task force. In 2021, his efforts led to the seizure of several hundreds of thousands of dollars in cash, an amount of drugs that had a street value of close to half a million dollars, and several illegally possessed firearms. And led by his efforts, the drug unit that year made 28 arrests in less than that year, nearly half of which were adopted federally by the U.S. Attorney's Office. It is no small feat to get cases adopted by the U.S. Attorney's Office. Their standards are quite high, uh, Mr. U.S. Attorney, and I believe that the presence here is indicative of the respect with which they hold Phil and, and his time in that role. Um, he will continue to be a leading co uh, you know, partner for them in his role as the drug sergeant. Chase Vivori. He is a patrol procedures instructor, a field training officer, an emergency response unit member, and a certified breaching instructor. He's a crisis negotiator. He's an ICAT instructor. He teaches here and at the Vermont Police Academy. Chase seems to do it all. Uh, he served with distinction on patrol and then was assigned to the street crimes unit throughout 2017. More recently, he has been an integral part of the drug unit, and he too, I think, is a reason why the U.S. Attorney is here. He doesn't stop while he's off the clock, either. While off duty last year, he spotted the vehicle and the shooting suspect from a murder that had happened in City Hall Park. He maintained visual on that vehicle, called in on-duty officers, and they made the arrest. That is exemplary, and we are grateful that Chase is stepping forward into a leadership role. And last, but certainly not least, Oren Byrne. Detective Corporal Oren Byrne wears more hats than you see at the Carraw for the Derby. He's got uh, limbs instructor, master taser instructor, patrol procedures instructor, tac med instructor, active shooter instructor, counter ambush instructor, and at the heart of how we as an agency approach de-escalation and deceleration, he is an ICAT instructor. In 2022, he was an integral part as a general detective of the Detective Services Bureau team that addressed shooting after shooting and murder after murder. He was also a member of the BPOA team that helped negotiate our new contract, and that contract is at the heart of our efforts to rebuild. Uh, 
Oren, I thank you too for all that you do and for stepping forward into this role. So to all these supervisory promotees, I extend our thanks. More will now be asked of you, but the rewards of leadership are indeed great. Caring for your people, encouraging their successes, and guiding them through challenges. My badge, I will never betray my badge, my integrity, my, integrity. my, character, my character, or the public trust. The public trust. I, will always have the courage I will always have the courage to hold myself and others, hold myself and others accountable, for our actions. accountable for our actions. I will always uphold, I will always uphold the, Constitution the Constitution and community, and community I, serve. I serve. I will therein. Equal right and justice. Do equal right and justice to all men and women. To all men and women. To the best of my judgment. To the best of my judgment and ability. And ability. According to the laws of this state. According to the laws of this state. In the United States of America. In the United States of America. Under the pains. Under the pains. And penalties of perjury. And penalties of perjury. Congratulations. So we, we call sworn officers sworn officers because of that last bit in that oath, the pains and penalties of perjury. It is not something that our professional employees uh, have, although they too take an oath, as do all city employees, to serve our fellow and to uh, be part of this community. But the pains and penalties of perjury part means that, that the officers are under a different kind of burden. It allows them to uh, file sworn statements. It makes the work that they do uh, more applicable in court, but it also provides a, a heavier expectation expectation on them. Um, that said, we, we also have obviously other kinds of employees here in this department. And in fact, the balance of this department is changing quite a bit. It used to be about 80% sworn officers, and now we're about two thirds sworn officers. That change is happening because we're creating new and different roles. Uh, some of them, however, are roles we've had for quite some time. Uh, one of the first professional promotions that we have today is uh, the emergency communications manager. Now dispatch is what emergency communications is. Emergency communications or dispatch is the lifeline of any department in any community. It is where you go when you need to call for help. And it's also what tells the officers who want to help where to go. Um, Larry Barbeau is actually already demonstrating why we made him our emergency communications manager, because he's in dispatch right now covering for a dispatcher who is going to be sworn in as, uh, as an emergency communications specialist. Um, it is, uh, he has been with us uh, many years uh, and we are grateful for him stepping forward to that. Similarly, our uh, community service manager is, is not with us today. Um, she is a, she has been in the past a community service officer. Community service officer is one of those professional positions that we are increasing in the department that is changing that balance that I talked about. Uh, and it's one that we've had for a very long time, but in the past only had two. Uh, we have expanded that to be allotted 11. We currently have five, I believe. And when we expanded the role in that way, we needed a manager. So one of our community service officers was promoted to community service manager, and that is Cassandra Sterling. Um, both of them are terrific employees, and I regret that they're not here with us today. But we will be thinking of them. Um, pardon? So. We are now going to swear in six professional employees who have joined us since our last ceremony in February. And I'll ask all of them to come up and then as I give a brief introduction to each, I'll ask him or her to step forward. And once that's done, we'll administer the oath uh, of office to all six together. So uh, if we will, if we can have our, thank you, if we can have our professional employees come up. Savannah Robson is first, an emergency communication specialist. 
again, the ECS role is a lifeline. Uh, it has been understaffed in the past. Uh, last year we got down almost to, I believe, five. Uh, it's supposed to have at least 12, and we're currently allotted 14. And that's what's necessary in order to have a 24-hour service that runs not only dispatch for us, but eventually and ultimately dispatch for fire as well. We need to grow. We need to first hear, uh, because this is the first voice that the public hears when it's looking for assistance. There are tremendous responsibilities with that, and I am grateful for the folks who have stepped forward into this role. Savannah was born and raised in Bennington. Sorry. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry, Savannah. I'm sorry. Wrong direction. Savannah, step forward, please. Wrong side. Uh, born and raised in Bennington. Thank you. Uh, graduated from Mount Anthony Union. You joined the Vermont Army National Guard as an intelligence analyst shortly after that and has been in the uh, Guard ever since. Savannah has been on one deployment and after arriving home, she joined the Bennington Police Department as a dispatcher. But looking to, to expand, she, she moved from home, came to Burlington and joined us full time as an ECS here. Uh, in her free time, she likes hiking and foraging and spending time with family and friends. Thank you for being here with us. David Sawley. David is also an emergency communications specialist. He was born and raised in Ohio. He moved to Vermont in May once he received the job offer here. He earned a, a bachelor's degree from Youngstown State University in Ohio. He worked as an EMS dispatcher prior to moving to Vermont. He's a lifelong Ohio football fan. Is that a requirement if you're from Youngstown? Pretty much. Pretty much. Uh, and he enjoys cooking, fishing, and hiking. Sarah Tim Hernandez, Hernandez Tim uh, is our public information and community engagement coordinator. Sarah is originally from Wisconsin. She relocated here to Vermont from Germany, however, where she was previously. She was earning her master's degree there and working with the State Department's mission to the United Nations, including with their public affairs team in New York and the human rights affairs team in Switzerland. Sarah lived and worked in Mongolia with the Peace Corps as an education and community development specialist. She is a law enforcement advocate, which we are grateful for, and she is excited to be joining to help us tell our story. She's already doing that. She's making incredible uh, efforts and has jumped right into the role, going to block parties, going to NPA meetings, having coffee and conversations with counselors and commissioners. She and her husband, Brian, are excited to explore New England and make this their new home. Thank you. Um, Anhad Bajwa is our recruitment coordinator. Anhad was born in Palmdale, California, and raved, raised in Clovis, California, and she is a first-generation Sikh American. She is fluent in Punjabi and English. Anhad graduated from California State University, Fresno, with a bachelor's in science and biology, and she graduated from Fresno Pacific with an MBA. In California, she volunteered at the Sikh Temple for Sunday School for many years and helped coordinate and host many charity and community events. She moved here to Vermont in December of 2022 after her husband attained a lead TSA position at the Burlington International Airport. Her hobbies include trying new things, reading, working out, spending time with fashion and friends, uh, excuse me, with family and friends, and fashion. There's a fashion in there. Sital Dulal. She is a community support liaison. Now, community support liaisons are yet another position that we have created and are working on in order to change that balance in the department and meet needs that we have not previously been able to meet in the way that we want. Uh, the CSL role was based largely on a uh, position that was occupied by the woman who's now the supervisor of the CSL team, uh, Lacey Smith. But I had long thought that what Lacey did was absolutely integral to our community, working with the homeless, working with people who suffer from substance use disorder, working with people who have mental health issues, particularly chronic mental health issues that, that sort of metastasize into being quality of life issues for their neighbors. And Lacey was so good at that that I said, why don't we clone her? And we did. We created this position, the Community Support Liaison, or CSL. It is a position that has allowed us to have a much deeper uh, relationship with the community. It also allows often officers to be able to bridge that gap between going to a situation, addressing the safety concerns, saying we've achieved some stability and safety here, but what do we do next? This isn't our uh, area of expertise. Instead, we say we've got this other group that we can uh, refer you to that knows how to connect you with services, knows how to give you the kinds of uh, support that you need, and it's been tremendously successful. Um, Sital uh, joined the BPD as a CSL in March of 2023. And previously, she held multiple roles at the U.S. Committee for Refugees and Immigrants, or USCRI, in the Vermont field office. She was born in Bhutan and grew up in Nepal and speaks Nepali, Hindi, and English. She earned her Bachelor of Science degree in Biology in Nepal and after college moved here to Vermont. 
began working with the refugee resettlement program, helping new immigrant communities navigate our sometimes complicated systems. And she's continued that uh, practice of helping people navigate by coming to the BPD as a CSL in order to bring new Americans and the law enforcement community together. She enjoys family time, hiking, biking, traveling. Thank you. And finally, Lindsay Sampson, a records clerk. Lindsay grew up in Ferndale, Michigan, just outside Detroit, and moved to Vermont in 2005 for college. She received her bachelor's degree in history from UVM and a master's degree in library and information studies from the University of Alabama. Lindsay enjoys swimming, biking, photographing cemeteries, reading, and playing Dungeons and Dragons. She just spent three weeks in Poland this spring, and I hear you liked it a lot. I loved it. Loved it. <laughs> So thank you all. Uh, Deputy Chief Labarge, who is the Deputy Chief of Administration and runs our professional teams, will step forward to administer the oath. <laughs> for the city of Burlington, for the city of Burlington, and the state of Vermont, and the state of Vermont. On my honor, on my honor, I will never betray my position. I will never betray my position. My integrity, my integrity, character, character, or the public trust, or the public trust. I will always have the courage. I will always have the courage to hold myself and others accountable for our actions. To hold myself and others accountable for our actions. I will always uphold the truth. I will always uphold the truth. And the community I serve. Thank you all. We have uh, a couple of additional acknowledgments to make prior to moving on to our, our new recruits. Uh, and those include our victim service specialist, Hannah Brislin. The Victim Service Specialist is an employee of both the BPD and the City of Burlington's Community and Economic Development Office, or CEDO. And the Victim Service Specialist provides support for victims of crime and harm in Burlington. Hannah comes from eight years of advocacy, wor advocacy work and is excited to bring that experience into their work as a Victim Service Specialist. Uh, Hannah embraces a community-based philosophy and restorative practices in their work. And their hobbies are exploring nature and hiking. Hannah has a dog named Trilly. And, and a cat named Window, and they both bring great joy to their existence. <laughs> uh, Zoe Portless, who I don't believe is here with us today, is our city data analyst, and she too deserves a shout out. The city data analyst is a position that's employed at the Office of City Planning, but is predominantly and largely attached to the Burlington Police Department, helping us create data that supports CompStat, that supports BTV stat, that is uh, at the heart of the reports that we produce, uh, particularly our annual report, which covers overall incident volume, traffic stops, arrests and citations, and use of force statistics. Uh, and Zoe is terrific for that. And last, but certainly not least in these positions, is Cole Hayes, our senior network administrator. Where are you, Cole? Cole's in the back. Come on, you can stand up. Cole uh, was an employee here as a, uh, as a network administrator. Um, he left us for a brief while, remained with us, however, as a, a temporary employee. Um, he is instrumental in the work we do. Anyone in the modern era knows that you gotta have IT, and Cole is an expert at that. It is, it is not just the day-to-day the -day help desk requests about, you know, how do I get this email out, or geez, what happened, why did this freeze? But it's, it's more serious stuff as well. Uh, it's cybersecurity for this facility. It is compliance with federal rules around uh, how we handle data. And it is also helping with the detectives. Uh, every single camera in the city of Burlington appears to use a different kind of system in order to be uh, in order to record its video. And Cole is instrumental in making certain that when we get that video in, we have some way to actually be able to watch it. And video is a very, very important part of how we solve cases. 
We also have our Beach and Parkers here with us today. I think they're all in the back, standing there in their very bright yellow clothing. Uh, Matt Halpard, uh, Matthew Halpard is part of our Beach and Parks Patrol from Nova Scotia, Canada. He's currently at Norwich University studying criminal justice. He's been a student athlete for most of his life and is an ice hockey player. Uh, I think in 2002, he received the Character Player of the Year from the Maritime Hockey League. Desmond Hooper also with the Beach and Parks Patrol graduated from BHS, worked in the summer of 2021 at the Vermont Youth Conservation Corps, worked with Beta Technologies, uh, and came to us as a Beach and Parks Patrol officer. They are the friendly faces that you see on the marketplace or on the bike path or at the beaches, uh, walking informational kiosks, eyes and ears for the police department, and, and really uh, important members of both the community and the department. And finally, Samuel Mutar, uh, also graduated from Burlington High School and the Burlington Technical Center in 2019. He's bilingual and speaks Romanian. He's currently a student at Champlain College and took this position in order to gain field knowledge about the criminal justice system while he's there. Uh, he's worked at Hannaford Supermarkets. So did I, uh, Samuel. I, that was my very first corporate gig was uh, working for Hannaford back when it was still called Martins. Um, so thank you very much to the three of you for being part of this team. And now it is time for our new police. And I would ask the probationary police officers to come up and join me. Class, attention. Forward, march. About face. That was impressive. <laughs> Thank you very much. These men and women are about to embark on 16 weeks of academy training. They'll be learning about community policing and fair and impartial policing and addressing mental health crises. They'll be getting training in the use of force, firearms, fingerprinting, forensics, and those are just the Fs. There's also precision driving and domestic violence and drug recognition and motor vehicle law and counterterrorism and interview and interrogation and juvenile law and, and, and it is a lot. There is a lot that they will be looking at over the next uh, 16 weeks. And the academy is just a piece because when we get you back, we are going to expose you to how Burlington does what we do differently and I believe better. You will have at least 580 hours of field training with experienced officers. By volume and variety, the men and women of this agency do more and see more than those of any other agency in the state. And we are going to expect a lot of you and I know that you will deliver. Corporal Carolyn Irwin, who has, uh, is our recruiting officer and has been leading them through their pre-basic uh, week and getting them ready to go down to the academy, has been working with you a lot. But you came to us with unique life stories and skills and abilities, and we chose you from hundreds of others because you have the ability to become the future of this agency. So let us meet the future one by one. Michael Malik. Michael is the only child of Anita and Gabriel Malik. He is a native Floridian and just moved to Vermont three weeks ago. He attended FSU and graduated cum laude with a BA in English. He taught English at Cypress Bay High School in Broward County, which is the largest public school in Florida. Michael is a competitive triathlete. He received fourth place in his age group at the 2018 US Triathlon Long Distance National Championship and qualified to represent Team USA at the 2018, excuse me, 2019 Long Distance Triathlon World Championship. Uh, the instructors are gonna have a lot of fun with you. They are going to work you and see how far you can go and whether or not you keep moving. It's gonna be great. You'll love it. Uh, step back and Mason Schuster. Mason was born in Burlington, Vermont, and grew up in Colchester. He graduated from Norwich University with a bachelor's in criminal justice and a minor in criminology, psychology, and sociology. Mason had an interest in law enforcement since he was very young, and he worked as a Beach and Parks person, like those three other individuals that I just mentioned to you. That generated a love for this department and the Burlington community. His hobbies are spending time with his family, golfing, and skiing. Next is, and you can step back, thank you. Next is Saja Almogali. Saja has been a community service officer or CSO for the past five months. And I told you a little bit about that CSO role and how important that is. Uh, it addresses quality of life issues. It doesn't have uh, a firearm. It's not armed. It can't make arrests. But the members of the CSO team can issue tickets. So they deal with issues around the city that are, are important to our neighbors, issues around noise, issues around uh, crashes, uh, issues around animal control. Um, 
Sasha was born in Baghdad, Iraq. She is fluent in Turkish and Arabic and proficient in ASL and Turkish. Uh, she moved, I think I said Turkish, fluent in Turkish, I meant fluent in English. She moved to Burlington, Vermont in 2017. That year she was invited to speak at the United Nations during Peace Day and speak about the issues affecting recently arrived refugees. In 2018, she received the Governor's Certificate of Welcome, awarded by Governor Phil Scott for being a recently arrived immigrant success story. In 2022, she became the youngest Burlington School Board Commissioner ever and still remains active. Saja graduated from UVM in May of this year with a bachelor's in health and society and a minor in biology. She spends most of her free time volunteering at UVM Medical Center, and we are very, very grateful to have her. Step back, Saja. Eric Goldman. Eric was one of the first CSLs that we hired in 2021. And uh, we've talked about the importance of that role. Eric's uh, specific area of responsibility as a CSL was dealing with people with substance use disorder. Eric moved to Vermont from central New York back in 2013 after completing a degree in psychology at SUNY Genesco. He worked in a communications role with the state of Vermont for several years while also working as a bartender in downtown Burlington. And then in 2016, he began working with the Howard Center Street Outreach Team. And here he, he gained some familiarity with BPD while also gaining deep familiarity with Burlington's most vulnerable populations. He also worked as a substitute at times at Howard Center First Call and the Community Outreach Program. So through bartending and street outreach and now his CSL work, this is someone who has developed a deep knowledge of Burlington and its vulnerable populations and the many service providers that are doing great work here in the community, from CEDO to the Howard Center uh, to the hospital. And we know that he's gonna leverage that in his policing. Outside of work, Eric is an avid mountain biker. He is the vice president of a nonprofit chapter of the Vermont Mountain Bike Association, which oversees and maintains several mountain bike trail networks in Chittenden County. And he likes going on rides, group rides, and doing trail work. Step back, Eric. Maeve O'Donnell. Maeve was born and raised in Queens, New York, and she is the middle child of three sisters. She graduated from St. John's University in May of 2023 with a Bachelor of Science in Criminal Justice and a 3.9 GPA. She went through the Homeland Security Investigations Explorer program in 2019, and she worked a year and a half as a New York City uh, Police Department police cadet. Cadets are positions in the New York City Police Department that are, are among the most important. They make the place run in very small and quiet ways, moving in and out from places, running things from one office to another, being there in the room a lot for things uh, that allow them a great deal of sort of insight and extra experience um, as they uh, see whether or not policing is something they want to do. She also worked as an usher at the Phantom of the Opera on Broadway. That had something like 14,000 performances over 35 years. How many did you do, Maeve? <laughs> <laughs> Corporal Irwin tells me that she is not sure if Maeve likes running, but she is a very good runner. That, too, will stand you in good stead down there. They will test that for you. Thank you very much. Step back. So uh, we shall administer the oath. And for those uh, sworn officers who are in the room today, uh, if you would like, you may take this oath with them uh, and renew your own.
our new police recruits. Thank you. There, there's a quote that I love that's attributed to a woman named Margaret Mead. Never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, committed citizens can change the world. Indeed, it is the only thing that ever has. So to all our new employees, welcome to that small group of citizens. Welcome to this amazing job. Welcome to a camaraderie that you won't get anywhere else. And I think the fact that we have so many people here who have, have joined us from other positions, who have moved through other positions in this department and stayed with us in those positions is a testament to that. It is a job where the right mixture of compassion and accountability and authority and common sense can make a difference in people's lives and the health of your community. It is a job that is bound by duty and tradition and it's sometimes tinged with heartbreak. It can be hurry up and wait. It has more paperwork than you can possibly imagine. But there is more potential for satisfaction than any other job. You find order in chaos. You are a source and symbol of safety. There are late nights at crime scenes. There is finding lost kids. There is helping people through difficult times. There's grabbing bad guys. There's comforting victims. It can be 99% routine punctuated, punctuated by 1% of unbelievable adrenaline and thrill and excitement. But you will never doubt that this job that you do matters. You will be frustrated at times, you'll have hard days, but the lesson of the past three years, the reason we are working so hard to rebuild is that you know, that our community knows, that we know that strong cities need good police. If rebuilding is the most important goal we currently have, and it is, so we can address our community's needs and the calls that come from our neighbors, then the most important thing that we can do is recruit great people. Burlington wants and deserves great cops, and we will not, we cannot compromise on that standard. And looking at these employees today and their families, I am confident that we have not. We are in the midst of one of the most important periods this agency has ever known. It is a rebuilding effort that we haven't experienced in more than half a century. And all of you are part of that effort. You are the foundation on which we are rebuilding. This is a high stakes job, it is a high stress job, but it is a highly rewarding job. And as I've said it before, it is impossible to have a great life unless it's a meaningful life. And it's very difficult to have a meaningful life without meaningful work. I cannot promise all of you a great life, but I can promise you a meaningful life because I can promise you meaningful work. I'm here for it. And I am very, very glad to have you as all new team members to be here for it too, so that we can work together with and for the neighbors that we serve in order to make sure that this city stays safe and fair everywhere for everyone. Thank you very much.